Michael, let's talk about the landscape of faith. Uh, start with Canada and talk about the U.S. as well. There are two books, and we'll have shots of those books. One you've written about um, a book called Hatred, uh, Islam's War on Christianity. And then also Michael Corrin, a national bestseller, Heresy, Ten Lies They Spread About Christianity. Uh, we're not in a persecuted church context in North America. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, faith, uh, people of faith, especially I think in many ways, Christians being targeted for our biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's, it's heavy and hard right now. It's really only Christians. We talk about freedom of religion. The Islamic community may be targeted in other ways. There's certainly a degree of, of racism. Uh, I reject the term Islamophobia, but there's a certain fear of Islam perhaps. But within media in general, people are very careful. They're very sensitive and they don't they don't ask what Islam really preaches. And it has a perfect right to have those views, but they're never questioned. Christians are routinely questioned, mocked. Now, we don't do a very good job. Very often, um, I mean, I, I think this show is an exception, but some of the people, I'm not gonna give any names, but sometimes we present alleged leaders of our community who want to argue all the time. Mm -hmm. And they, they want to claim persecution and, and they're shouting a lot. And that's not the Christian way. Mm -hmm. It is not the way of, of, of the Son of God or of his immediate followers. We, we have to be inclusive. We have to widen the circle of love. It's not about how many people we can get here. Let's, let's be very restrictive. It's about being as broad as we possibly can be. I think we have to change the nature of the conversation. I think we have to listen to other people. That's so important to us. And I, and I, I believe among, as we look at our production team at 100 Huntley Street, we really are committed to, to trying to find, and we won't always get it right, mm. we're, we're human, fallen, sinners, but we, we're, we're trying very hard to find that right conversation, tone, pace, rhythm, uh, the right words. Um, so so we're, we're walking every day, uh, you know, in this life, and uh, we uh, are in a country that has uh, some very positive historical roots as far as the faith is concerned, biblical truth. And just uh, this, uh, oh, earlier this month, uh, we read that the Supreme Court of Canada unanimously, mm -hmm. not one dissenting vote, but unanimously declared that no longer could a mayor or a city councilor have any kind of prayer or faith proclamation. In fact, all those uh, council rooms uh, must be rid of any religious symbols. And just out of nowhere, uh, there was seemed to be just another thing taken away from from faith. Now, will the faith in Jesus Christ go forward? Will the church fold because of a Supreme Court decision? <laughs> no. no. But, but it is just one of those frustrations that you see, and it just continues to be that way, it seems, month after month. It is frustrating, and I suspect the uh, litigious atheist who brought this, uh, this case to court, I'm sure I wouldn't have that much in common with him. I find the intervention of an activist court sometimes rather annoying, if not obnoxious. Yeah. But, 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 look, the, the Lord's Prayer is the most important prayer, important collection of words in my life. It's the, the very epicenter of my being. Right. I ask myself about this. How, how do I really feel? Um, I think it's Matthew 6. You're the expert. You will know. <laughs> Don't pray in public so people can hear, but uh, mm. in, in private to yourself. I, I would hope with every fiber of my body that every politician prayed to God before a council meeting, before a parliamentary chamber opens. Mm. Privately. Uh, privately. Uh -huh. That, that, that the prayer is taken away, it's regrettable, but is it tradition or is it religion we're talking about here? Mm -hmm. If it's just preserving the past, I, I don't care. I simply don't care. Mm -hmm. If it's a direct attack on faith, that's more of an issue. I don't know if it is. I, I think maybe implicitly it is, but I don't believe that this is saying no to Christianity. It, it, it's about trying to be as, as non-threatening to everyone as they possibly can be. The Supreme Court may have made the wrong decision, has it dented my faith in any way? Yeah. No. Has it yeah. prevented me from being a Christian? No. The real issues, uh, Christ speaking about the poor, the marginalized, about love, non-judgmentalism, uh, turning the other cheek, this we're, we're allowed to do. We can proclaim the faith. So, and something else, I, I've, I've covered a lot of politics in my life. Yeah. I've seen these chambers looking at their Blackberry as they're saying the Lord's Prayer, uh -huh. um, looking at the agenda while, they, while, while they're mouthing words robotically. I find that offensive. Yeah. I'd rather they didn't do that. I'd rather they didn't pretend. That's very convicting. And, 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 and I, I suppose for many of us, there is a concern about what you almost see a cascading impact. Yeah, I see that. And, and you're seeing um, a, a, a spiritual landscape change. And, and I know there are, I suppose that my desire would be 
and this is where I think that you could speak so clearly, is that if you could just give Christians a level playing field, yeah, yeah. but you just give us a level playing field, but it really does seem there are agendas that want to just simply shut down the Christian faith or Christian doctrine or Christian principles. Let's rid it completely of society. In other words, shut up and sit down. Yeah. Be quiet. There's no, the, the people who, who pursue this, I wouldn't say there's an agenda, but they, they, they can get away with it. What's the worst that will happen? A, a letter to the editor? Uh -huh. No one is going to come and burn their house down. No one is going to kidnap them and cut off their head. No Christian's going to do that. No, they're not going to be accused no, no. of any ism. They no. just do what, what they want to do. And because we haven't always commuted, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, you, you will know him, but I'm not going to say his name. He's a very fine man, a Baptist minister. He came to this country from the United Kingdom, came to Canada. He went to see the local MP, made an appointment, went to see the local MP, and the MP said, okay, uh, you know, a bit nervous, w what is it? W what would you like? And the man said, no, I'm just saying, is there anything I can do for you? Mm -hmm. I I've moved into this large Baptist church. Is there anything, I can I be here for you? Yeah. And he said, the politician, it just, the blood went from his face because he thought he'd be shouted at. Totally disarmed. Yeah, and here was a Christian leader an evangelical Christian leader saying, I want to be here for you. I don't care what your politics are, I want to be here for you. If we do lead the Christian life properly, it's amazing how many doors open. What we don't want to do is to shout at people who we think are opposing it. Look, I, I know it's hurtful. I, of course it is a Christmas tree, not that that matters so much, but a Christmas tree is removed and this prayer is removed. And, but I do believe, and I'm, I'm not saying this in any way to be offensive to people, but I do think we have to distinguish between preservation of the past, nostalgia, and holding on tight to the faith of Jesus Christ. Several years ago, I wrote a book, uh, um, co-authored a book on prayer called Pivotal Praying. And um, in that book, we talked about a, um, a, a story we heard of concerned citizens. They were, direct, they were concerned about their community. Uh, these were Christ followers. They were struggling about the, the conflict on the city council and the mayor and all that. Yeah. And so they started going to the city council meetings and sitting on the back row and quietly interceding. They just would sit there with their eyes open, but they would pray mm. for the city councilors and for the mayor. And over time, they noted behavior improved, <laughs> relationships got better. They were simply exercising their faith in that arena through the power of prayer. And I, and I would hope that out of something what we saw related to the Supreme Court decision, that instead of woe is me and panic setting in, and we need to address it, and, and there are, there, we, we've got to talk about it, and we do. Mm. How wonderful it would be if you could see a mobilization of, 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 of Christians who would be willing to, to, to go to city council meetings and to intercede for those, as the Bible tells us, we should pray mm -hmm. for, those that are in authority over us. Exactly so. And, and encouraging people to pray more, to say quietly the Lord's Prayer, or whatever prayer it is, to give that day to God, to Christ, if, if more people did that. Um, it's a difficult one to tread because I don't, I don't want people to feel I, I, I'm, I'm not fighting for them. Uh, Michael Corrin says it's okay. No, and you're not marginalized. No, no, I'm no, not, no, no. And I understand, I understand. But the older p people, that they've lived their life as wonderful Christians. They feel they're being attacked by the country they live in, they may have fought for, that they, they love so very much. And it is a bit irritating. But, but and, look, an unelected Supreme Court, many of whom probably don't quite understand the Christian community, mm -hmm. but it doesn't prevent me from being the Christian I want to be. And I, I, I've used this phrase a few times, that changing the conversation. If we're to present the gospel, particularly to a new generation, we have to think of a different conversation. That doesn't mean we abandon the faith. I, I tell you, I, I got it wrong, I think, for years. How so? I, I believe I was defending a party line. I think I was often too harsh. I tried to be loving, but I think I was, I, I was, I was defending, if you like, the, the um, political manifestations of being a Christian rather than the Christian message itself. Mm -hmm. What the position I am at now, and maybe I've got it wrong again, I don't know, but I believe we have to walk forward as, as broken people following him um, in a way that shows love and understanding. And it's difficult because there are people out there who simply want to hurt us. There are people who want to hurt, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm not a public figure, but I'm known by quite a few people. Yeah. Some of the things have been said about me and, and my family, including, I've got to tell you, by some Christians. Mm -hmm. It's very hurtful. Yeah. But that's what defines us. How many right. times do we forgive? Three, no, seven, no, endless, a plethora, a that's myriad. Right. You keep, right. till the end of time. It's by our witness that we are going to convince people. We can, we can argue people into faith in, in, in a compassion. Ravi Zacharias, wonderful apologist, um, people like this, but also just personal witness, right. love and forgiveness. You'd be amazed how many people say, whoa, where did he get that from? How about being a good neighbor? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's um, right. I mean, how many people, eat, um, on a literal level, how many people even know who their neighbor is? 